guys, just here. I have a new video for you today, especially created for uh, my friends who are new to scrapbooking or people who have been watching YouTube or have heard of scrapbooking and they're just kind of not sure where to start. I thought I would put a video together to share with you all um, a great great start if you're or, or items to have if you want to begin scrapbooking. Um, I want to try to keep this simple because I know it can be easily overwhelming uh, looking at all uh, the YouTube videos and going into uh, a, a craft store like Hobby Lobby or Joann's and seeing all the different scrapbooking stuff you're just probably if you're new to this you're just your head is spinning and you're just like I have no idea where to begin so I am here to give you my advice and my tips on what you should get uh, when you're new to scrapbooking, basic tools, basic supplies, to ease you into the hobby and to help you really figure out what you like, what you don't like, and if it's for you. Um, Cause there's nothing more disappointing that you go out and buy all the things and then you realize, well, oh, this really isn't my jam or I'm not really, you know, I'm not sure that I like it, like scrapbooking, then you've invested a ton of money and you never end up using it. So I thought I would help you out and uh, give you give you you know my top list for a beginner scrapbooker and the tools and supplies that I think will help you get started and expose you to enough where you can kind of figure out what you like, what you don't like, and what direction you want to go in. Um, just a little disclaimer: um, none of this is sponsored by anybody. This is my own personal. Uh, experiences and recommendations of products that I like to use and I think would benefit uh, any one of you who are new or maybe you're established and you haven't used some of these supplies so I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you find it helpful uh, make sure you give this a like if you enjoy this type of video and hit subscribe and that little bell notification so you get uh, updated on anything new that I post and for all of those of you who are new thank you so much for joining me and for those who have subscribed I appreciate your support so very much thank you thank you thank you all right so let's go ahead and get started um scrapbooking wonderful hobby it's memory keeping I am you know I I love it so much I love uh the creative aspect of it and I also love that I am uh capturing memories uh throughout life so that when my children are owner, older and I have grandchildren, uh, they can hopefully enjoy the albums uh, and see the memories that I have, have captured over the years. Um, that is my hope. <laughs> you know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but I really hope that um, my children or grandchildren will cherish these albums as much as I do. But at the very least, I enjoy the process. I enjoy being, it's my creative outlet, um, and I just find it really fun and relaxing hobby and to just like go back and remember moments through photos it's just a really fun experience so um, I have been scrapbooking uh, since I was 16 um, I started out very simple with stickers and cutting around you know around the people in photos and just pasting them down in a standard photo album uh, I've come a long way in, in the 20, 20 years that I've been scrapbooking. Um, and so I've been around the block with a few things, uh, a few tools, a few products that, you know, uh, that are tried and true for me and that I enjoy. So I'm going to share those with you. So the first step with scrapbooking is that you need photos. And there are multiple ways to get photos. Um, I used to... Uh, order my photos online or I used to go to like CVS or Walgreens and use their in-store printers to get my photos. I did that for a very very long time. Uh, you know Shutterfly, Walmart.com, uh, there's a uh, Snapfish I think is another one. There's a whole bunch of companies that do online printing. What I found out with that was if you do it online at least I found that I ordered too many duplicates or the quality wasn't really great and I didn't have a lot of control over it. So um, I prefer to print my photos at home now uh, and I actually, I purchased a Canon selfie which is a personal home printer. Now that to me is a purchase you would make if you were, you know, it's a hobby you're really dedicated about and it's something you want to do long term. For a new scrapper, I think ordering online or through CVS or going in store is a great option. Um, uh, again, if you find a good online vendor that has good quality, 
use them. They often have deals like free prints or, you know, prints that are a couple cents a piece. It's a really great start. So you just need to find a way to print your photos. If you, you know, decide scrapbooking is something you really love, you may want to invest in a personal photo printer at home. But for beginners, you're okay to order them online or, in, you know, go in store. So there's really great. So photos are, the, you know, the number one thing. You got to know what you're, you're, you're scrapping, right? All right. So the next item you're going to need is um, you have to decide on what size you're going to scrapbook and what kind of album. So there are many different kinds of albums. Um, there's postbound albums, there's D-ring albums, and there's like these... Um, uh, albums made by Creative Memories here um, that are like these little I don't know how to explain it these little ties here um, I don't know what you actually call them but there's a few different types of albums uh, that you can get in different sizes so I scrapbook a few different sizes I think it's important for you to figure out you know what size speaks to you now there is the traditional 12 by 12 size. This is a D-ring album. Um, these are my favorite kind of albums. I think it's easy to put pages in and out of them, rearrange them, and they fit a lot. As you can see, this album, it's not even at capacity yet, but it's pretty full. Um, and this is a nice faux leather uh, with the protected corners. And when you open it up, you can see here, there is the D-rings right there. Um, and so you just open them up just kind of like a binder from school and you insert the the page protector and your pages um, this is the 12 by 12 traditional scrapbook size you can find these albums anywhere and I purchased the albums you know from all over wherever I can find a good deal or a pattern that I like I typically purchase them this album is a I'm not really sure who makes this one, but I bought some by Project Life. We are memory keepers, uh, close to my heart, has really great quality albums. So uh, Becky Higgins, um, I think she does not the Project Life actually. Um, so I found that they're all good quality and nice size and they have lots of fun patterns and colors. I do personally prefer the ones that have um, the label section or the little label tag on the end so I can put photo in or label, you know, what the album is for. Um, but yeah, the 12 by 12 is traditional. It's a nice big size. You can do horizontal and vertical layouts. It's, it's really, really great. And you can find product to fit it um, relatively easily. Let me show you the other sizes. So I, I scrapbook a bit of both, you know, a, a bit of a few sizes. So the other popular size is an eight and a half by 11. So here's um, a Heidi Swap album. And I can't remember the what she actually calls this line. Uh, to be honest with you, there's a name for it and I can't remember. Um, but I picked this up at Joann's and again, it's a D-ring style. It's an eight and a half by 11. Um, it's got the great spine with the little label on it and they come in different patterns and colors. Really the big difference here is the size of the layouts. They are eight and a half by 11, so they're a lot smaller. These, sorry about the glare. Ooh, do my best. Um, this size is really fun. Uh, you can do, a, uh, again, you have a lot of options. My only, um, the only downfall to this size is that horizontal um, is still an option, but they have to go into the album vertically. Whereas you, if you have a 12 by 12, um, you can do horizontal and vertical and you can look at them instead, you know, without having to kind of turn your album. That is the one downfall, in my opinion, to eight and a half by 11. Other than that, I really love the size, uh, and I also feel like your product goes a lot further. Um, you know, you get a little bit more more layout for your, you know, because most papers come 12 by 12, for example, most pattern papers, um, and you kind of use less embellishments and stuff just because your layout size is a little smaller. So eight and a half by 11 is very fun and easy to find, just like 12 by 12, very, very easy to find. So this is another size option. So then the one other size that I prefer or I scrapbook um, is nine by 12. So nine by 12, it's just slightly larger 
obviously, than an 8.5 .5 by 11. Um, one of the reasons I like 9 by 12 a little bit better than 8.5 by 11 is simply for the Project Life scrapbooking. The page protectors for the Project Life fit 4x6 and 3x4 cards perfectly, whereas the 8.5 by 11, um, you have to trim everything down because the pages are just that much smaller. So this is a 9 by 12. As you can see, I have a, a Project Life protector here and your standard layout. So again, let me see if I can't, I'll show you the size difference um, between the two. It's very minimal, but you notice it when you're scrapping. So this is an eight and a half by 11, and that's a nine by 12. Hopefully you can see the difference. Just slightly, slightly larger, but when it comes to scrapping, it does make a difference. Um, so I really like this mainly for the project life. And so that, you know, brings me to the next supply, which is obviously very important to have, is um, page protectors. So you can find 8.5 by 11 and 12 by 12 page protectors um, pretty much anywhere. You are going to want to be careful with the quality. Um, some of them are made cheaper and your pages... Uh, they're not as snug, I guess, with your layout, so they could be loose and your pages could fall out. So you might want to be cautious of the quality of the page protectors. I find um, Project Life close to my heart, and we are memory keepers, make good quality page protectors. The thing, you know, all the, they're true to size and your, and your layouts and your pages fit nicely in them. Um, but again, I would just, you want to make sure they're a little bit on the thicker side when it comes to this material. They're not too thin. So your layouts are nice and secure. And your cards don't fall out or your layouts don't fall out. And you again can find page protectors anywhere, really. Um, they're, you know, they're, there's often sales and they come in packs of, you know, 10, 12, 100. So possibilities are endless. Um... One more thing about, well, page protectors and just scrapbooking your size, um, let me see if I can get that glare, I'm sorry, um, is as you can see here, I have a, you know, a nine by 12 layout, but I also have uh, what they call project life or pocket scrapbooking. So these are two different styles of scrapbooking. Obviously a standard layout is just one page, your full, is one full layout here. And your pocket scrapbooking is just that. It's individual little pockets um, uh, with uh, that you put cards and photos in and together they tell a story. Um, and so it's like these little individual cards are kind of own little mini layouts. So I combine both into my scrapbook albums. Some people choose just to do Project Life and you can do it uh, by week, by month, by year random, you know, if you want to combine a bunch of photos together, um, the pocket scrapbooking is a really great way to do that. Um, so there's no right or wrong way. It's kind of more or less just what you prefer. I like to mix it up and I like uh, to throw in some project life or pocket scrapbooking into my regular albums um, just because I use this to capture all the small little little moments in a month um, and then I highlight the, the big ones with the larger layout. But again, it's all personal preference. I find every all of them fun, all the different sizes, so there's no right or wrong way to go. So album, super important, and really, you know, taking a good hard um, look at what size would, would you think you would enjoy scrapbooking most? Okay, so next we have a uh, paper trimmer. So paper trimmers uh, is a really important tool to have. They make cutting straight very easy. You don't have to do it by hand. Um, and they're very easy to find and very inexpensive. There are two, two main types of um, trimmers. You have your static, I'm gonna call it a static blade. Let me get my other example here uh, so you can see. Your singular blade and then you have your rotary blade. So this is a We Are Memory Keepers trimmer. And as you can see, it has one of these blades that slide up and down. And if I can lift this up here, let's see if I can get, get you a closer look. 
So as you can see right there, it's just got a single little blade. These are great, easy to find. Um, however, what I find with these trimmers is that the blade goes dull very quickly. So I, I tend to not use these as often. Um, you can get replacements of these, but I'm finding I'm having to replace them a lot. So my personal preference is a rotary blade, which is what I have right here. Um, let me see if I can show you what that looks like. Um, so it is this little wheel. Uh, let's see. There you go. And so that's the blade right there. And so it snaps closed and you just push down and run it. Um, I have had the same blade in this trimmer. Uh, I kid you not for three years. <laughs> um, it hasn't gone dull on me at all. Um, I use this trimmer a lot. As you can see, it's broken here on, uh, or one of the, it's not broken, but one of the little plastic knobs. I take this, I love this trimmer so much. Um, it, it, it just, it lasts and it's great. It has this little arm. And most come like this. They have this little arm so you can measure a full 12 by 12. It has your paper guard so you can get it straight. Put this down and you just run the, the blade across. I personally love the rotor, rotary blades. I think they last a lot longer. And the cuts are nice and clean. And if you do need to sharpen them to get a little more life out of your rotary blade, you can actually run, uh, cut a piece of tinfoil a few times and that will sharpen it up. I've used that trick in the past. Um, but yeah, this one's by Friskers. Uh, you can find it at most craft stores, I believe. Uh, but Rotary Blade is um, my recommendation anyway. I really love it. But you definitely need a trimmer. It makes um, cutting paper so much easier. Okay, next up in the cutting world, you also need scissors. Um, I have two pairs of main I have lots of scissors. I have... Um, probably six total pairs on my desk. <laughs> um, however, when you're new to scrapbooking, uh, you don't need six pairs of scissors. Um, you just, in my opinion, need two. And you need a large uh, standard pair of scissors. These are, we are Memory Keepers uh, heavy metal paper scissors. I absolutely love these. I love that they're heavy. They cut beautifully. The important part about scissors is that you only you want a dedicated pair to your paper crafting. You don't want to get the scissors out of the junk drawer in the kitchen that has been used to cut everything <laughs> that are dull or sticky or you know you don't want that. You want to get a nice pair of scissors that's solely for paper crafting. That way they won't be all gunked up and they'll cut very nicely. And don't let anyone in your family take them. <laughs> These are yours and hide them if you have to because you're gonna wanna keep them in nice shape. The other pair of scissors is um, a, a smaller pair. I call these fussy cutting scissors. Uh, this one here is a pair from close to my heart. They're just small little, little scissors here. And this is for more like tiny cutting, intricate cutting, um, fussy cutting, which is uh, when you take some paper and you're cutting out a, you know, a flower in a, in a pattern piece of paper or cutting around something smaller, Smaller scissors are really great for that and very handy versus trying to cut out small pieces with the bigger scissors. So my recommendation is having two pairs and make sure they're solely dedicated to paper crafting so they don't get ruined. Now you can, as a suggestion, uh, add in one more pair of scissors to your stash and I call these my junk scissors and these are the scissors I use to cut uh, sticky foam or tape or you know packaging or whatever these are my my scissors that I use and beat up and and cut all the the, the yucky uh, stuff that isn't paper and so these are my scissors I allow to get all gunked up and then I save my my good scissors for only paper cutting so that's an optional third pair uh, I would recommend it but again it's not a must-have but if you want your paper scissors to last longer get a junk pair and I mean Dollar Tree um, or wh what have you they don't have to be expensive but scissors are super super important okay next we're gonna talk adhesive so adhesive there's different kinds um, different options I'm gonna give you my recommendation on where to start start to begin with um, so I'm going to recommend for a beginner scrapbooker 
to start with some double-sided tape. Um, this is great. I got it at Dollar Tree. It's by the Crafters Square. There's a lot on a roll and it's a dollar. Especially if you're new to scrapbooking, don't invest in the little hand you know, tape, tape runners. Number one, they're very expensive. And if you're not sure if this is gonna be a hobby for you, don't invest in these right away. Double-sided tape, honestly, I prefer it. Um, it's inexpensive. A lot goes, you know, this roll goes a long way. Um, and it's, it's easy to use. And it's just a good buy all around. So double-sided tape is a great supply to have and a really great adhesive option, especially if you're a beginner. But even if you're not, even if you're an established scrapbooker, honestly, I love using double-sided tape. I use it a lot. So that's my first recommendation. My next recommendation, if you decide you want to go with um, a handheld tape runner, I use the Tombow adhesive, permanent adhesive brand. There you go. You can get these, you know, at Joann's, Hobby Lobby, uh, online. You can get them anywhere. Uh, office Supply, I think you can buy the tape runners in bulk at a decent price. You're looking at about five to six dollars for this runner right here. And then your refills, depending on how many you buy and where you buy them, could run you, you know, a dollar fifty all the way up to, you know, three dollars a piece. So it can, these can be expensive. Um, and although they're great and very convenient, I do find sometimes you get a bad apple and you have to throw a whole tape runner out because it gets gunked up or it doesn't, um, it doesn't roll right or come off the runner right. And that's where I'm like, I really like double-sided tape because you don't have those issues. <laughs> it just works every single time. Um, but I can't knock the convenience of a handheld tape runner. So if you want to make the investment, they do have, um, uh, you know, generic brands, cheaper brands, they don't work as well in my opinion, but if you have, if one of my my subscribers or who's watching does have a recommendation for a generic tape runner that's affordable, please certainly put it on uh, in the comments below and share. I have yet to find one, but um, once I've discovered, you know, this inexpensive double-sided tape, I kind of haven't looked back really, but these handheld tape runners are an option, um, but again, it's a little bit more of an investment when it comes to adhesive. My other recommendation is some pop dot adhesives. Again, I got these at Dollar Tree. I got two sheets. Um, there are 528 foam, I don't know if you can see the dimension here, uh, foam stickers or foam pop dots, you call them. And they're little adhesive dots. Let's see if I can give you, well, these aren't quite the same brand, but you get the idea here. Um, they're dimensional. You can see that there. And so they help pop things up off your off your layout. So I like these because one, they're inexpensive, and two, they give you the opportunity to give you a little bit of dimension in your layout through you know an embellishment or lift, lifting your photo up. Um, so I think it's a fun little added adhesive. Um, again, this is optional, you don't need it, but I think it's nice to have um, to add that dimension. So dose light of tape, adhesive foam dots are in my opinion, a must-have um, and a good good first buy, and then a tape runner if you want to go uh, the more convenient route. So adhesive, super, super important, tape adhesive. In addition to tape adhesive, I also recommend uh, glue. You can use glue in place of tape adhesive if you prefer. Um, I do do that sometimes, especially if you start dabbling in mixed media, wet glue is just the way to go, just because your tape doesn't stick, it doesn't hold up long term to mixed media, so I use wet glue anyway. Um, but glue is a good alternative for tape or to add to your adhesive collection. I use the Aline's, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Aline's Quick Dry Tacky Glue. Um, you can get this on Amazon, you can get it at Walmart, Joann's. Um, I like the quick dry tacky glue because when it says quick dry, it dries quick. So it's not like your standard glue where you're sitting there holding the piece down for 20 minutes till it dries. This literally dries in in less than a minute to where that you can move on and the, your piece isn't going to move. Um, this, is, this is by far my favorite and most affordable. 
excuse me, glue that I have found. There are lots of different brands out there. There's the Scotch Tacky glue, there's the glitter glue, there's the, I think I've, I've got a new one I've tried, which is the Barely Adhesive. Um, so there's lots of different brands, all very pr various price points. Honestly, this one's easy to find and it works really great. Just make sure you get the quick dry. And I buy the bigger bottles. This is eight fluid ounces and it lasts me forever. So if glue is something you're interested in as an adhesive option, I would also recommend getting a fine line bottle. So there you go. You can get these on Amazon. I, I picked these up uh, personally at Hobby Lobby a while back in the um, model car section. And so what this does, it, it gives you a fine tip applicator for your glue. So really for those smaller pieces that, um, let me just show you, like your standard glue bottle. Oh, let's see. See the different size? You get this real tiny hole here and then your regular glue is much larger. This uh, fine line bottle gives you an option to get small glue dub, uh, Get glue down the smaller pieces. Goodness, I can't talk. Um, and you're not squirting glue everywhere. Just, again, it's fine line. It gives you more accuracy and a finer tip uh, to add the glue. Um, again, you can get those on Amazon or, and there's other, other brands of these you can get. Um, this is just happens to be one that I saw on other YouTubers using, so I sought it out because I liked it and it works really well. Important part is to keep the lid on. Uh, in between uses so your glue doesn't dry and clog up the that metal tip but other than that this is really great and it works brilliant for those small little pieces so a uh, wet glue is another really great uh, item to add to your your basic supplies in my opinion okay so I think we have covered all the basic tools um, that I would recommend having when you're beginning to scrapbook. So we went over scissors, paper runner, adhesive, albums. Um, so those are all your basic tools and supplies you need to scrapbook. So where do you begin with product? I think for me, or if, if I was a new scrapbooker, actually it still happens to me, uh, the product, like, and what I mean by product is like the paper collections, embellishments, um, is so overwhelming because there is so much to choose from um, and I feel like it's also easy to just go and buy all the things because they're all so pretty but if you're new to scrapbooking um, and even if you're not um, you can easily buy too much and then not know what to do with it so if you're new especially uh, my recommendation for new scrappers is to start with a kit a scrapbooking kit um, and a collection kit it, uh, is what I mean by that and you can either sign up for a kit subscription or you can just buy collections altogether I'm going to show you both options and, and here's why I think it's a great start especially for a newbie um, scrapbook kits generally come with 12 double-sided papers this one is by Echo Park um, it's called Teen Spirit and it comes with 12 double-sided pattern papers so as you can see those really fun patterns um, and then it also comes with Project Life cut apart so down there at the bottom here it comes with cut apart sheets so if you like pocket scrapbooking it comes with that as well and then it comes with stickers um, which so basically with this one kit you have coordinating papers you have Project Life cards and you have embellishments all in one and they all coordinate. How much easier can it get? <laughs> Not really any easier. Um, I think this is a really, really great option and a good place to start for new scrapbookers. It's because again, like I said, you can buy so many, so much product and so much of the things and then you don't know how to put them together. If, if, if you're an eclectic person and, and being matchy matchy really isn't that challenging for you or it, it doesn't really matter and that's that's okay too but I think a lot of people in, in you know in my years of scrapping a lot of people like things to coordinate to match it makes it easier for them to scrapbook so buying a kit it takes all that that matching 
uh, and does it for you. You don't have to put the pieces together. So this Echo Park uh, collection is a very basic kit, um, but uh, it gets the job done. A lot of great products, really fun colors, and it all matches. Um, so here's another example right here. Again, beautiful papers. It comes with your cut aparts. This one has some strips that you can cut apart. And then really fun, beautiful sticker sheet that acts like ephemera as well, die cuts. You know, you can use them versus, you know, either way. Uh, really great place to start, especially if you're, if you're a new scrapbooker. Uh, if you want a little bit more, um, if you, you know, watch YouTube or see other scrap, or you watch my channel, for example, which I hope you do, um, make sure you subscribe. Um, uh, I do process videos and you see that I use a lot of different product. I use mixed media, I use die cuts, I use thickers, I use ephemera, I use enamel dots, I use all these different products. Um, and so for me, because I've been scrapbooking for so long, I, you know, I can easily still get overwhelmed by product, but I have a better sense of what I like. And so I purchased based on how I scrap and what I like. If you're somebody kind of new and you want to experience all those products, but you don't know where to begin, in my opinion, a kit subscription is the way to go. And let me show you. Now, if you guys have, um, been with my channel for a while, you know that I subscribe to the Hip Kit Club, and I have also recently subscribed to Citrus Twist, um, and so I'll show you both, um, just so you can get a sense of what they have to offer. So Hip Kit Club is a scrapbook sub monthly subscription, so you pay a monthly fee, um, and you get uh, for the single fee, you get the what they call the main scrapbooking kit. So you can choose between traditional scrapbooking, which is 12 by 12 papers and embellishments, or you can go Project Life or Pocket Scrapbooking, which is geared towards just that, Project Life um, and Pocket Scrapbooking. So you have a choice. And then in addition to the main kit, you can choose to buy um, extra embellishment kit, cardstock kit, um, um, additional pattern papers. So you have lots of other options. So I love a subscription kit because it gives you a little bit of everything to try. So you get to have fun with all different kinds of products and they're chosen for you. Plus they coordinate, they do all the coordination for you, the color coordination, and theme coordination for you. So what I have here is a collection of the main kit and an embellishment kit from the Hip Kit Club. So I just want to show you what you get. Uh, so you get some beautiful embellishment packs. You know, this one has fun sequins, wood veneer. I actually got a little stamp set, um, some frames, some puffy stickers, some clear stickers, some die cuts, some more clear stickers. Uh, this is a banner making kit. How fun is that? enamel dots, some chipboard, and then three kinds of alphas. So this is two of the kits, and that is so much product. And the possibilities are endless. You can have so much fun with this. And then, you know, here's your papers. So you get 12 different papers. This one comes with a cut apart, and you, they're usually a variety of manufacturers. So you get a sample of a lot of different designers, but they all, they do such a fantastic job coordinating these. And these are all double-sided and they're high quality, thicker pattern paper. They're not thin like paper pads. So I, I really think a, you know, a subscription kit is the way to go. And the prices are very reasonable. You get a lot for your money and you get to experience a whole bunch of new products. So if you decide, you know, scrapbooking is the hobby for you, you start to learn, you know, what kind of embellishments you like, what kind of, um, you know, papers you like. So when you do go shopping, you can kind of, you, you kind of know what you're looking for now, right? It gives you that little, you know, little bit of exposure to the big world of <laughs> scrapbooking products. And I think it's less overwhelming to get a small package like this and have fun playing around rather than going into a store and, and just kind of staring and be like, I don't know where to begin. This does some of that work for you. And it's kind of like 
a surprise every month. It's a gift every month that you get in the mail, which is super fun. It's kind of like Christmas every month. <laughs> so I think a kit subscription is a really, really great way to go. And so I wanted to show you, in addition to your embellishments, um, I mentioned earlier that they also do um, mixed media kits as well. So each month comes with um, a mixed media kit. So if mixed media is something you're interested in, you do have the option to do an add-on uh, for the mixed media with, uh, this is the Hip Kit Club, if I hadn't mentioned that before. And I'll put the link below um, to this and all the products uh, that I can find links for. Um, but if, you know, they also sell an add-on kit, which is mixed media, which you get all these various fun, you know, products to try like shimmer sprays and this is a uh, liquid based watercolor. Um, you get Nuvo dimensional drops, uh, mousse, some magical uh, powders that you mix in with, you know, water or acrylic paint and then some shimmer paint or shimmer paste, excuse me. And a lot of this stuff, you'll get a stencil as well. I've gotten, um, various different sprays and things that I have never used before and I I wouldn't have known about them if I hadn't gotten them in my kit. So I find this is a really great way to not only get introduced to mixed media but get introduced to a wide variety of mixed media and to help build your stash a little bit at a time. So um, really really fun great way and like I said it's they do, they do all of the thinking and decision making for you and you just get it in your mail, you open it up and then you have fun playing. <laughs> um, so kit, my recommendation, number one recommendation is a, to start out is a subscription. And then uh, I think once you start, you realize how much you love it and you may, that may be all you do for scrapbooking. And like I said, you get your new stuff every month, you know, or like I said, it's a good, uh, lift off point to learn about different products and manufacturers and you figure out what you like and then you can go seek it out in the stores. So it's a win-win in my opinion. Um, so that is a scrapbook um, uh, subscription kit uh, or Project Life. So they do both. But for this one, um, I actually buy both because um, I, as you guys see, I do pocket scrapbooking as well. Um, so then the other company, just to show you a difference, um, I do is Citrus Twist Kits, and they also do um, uh, pocket scrapbooking or Project Life, but they also offer uh, 12 by 12 kits as, as well. I only purchased the, the Project Life uh, kit for them. I, I love their design. It's very modern and, and hip and um, creative, and the quality of their products, again, are really, really good. So, um, I think in the last three kits that I've gotten from them, I've always gotten a stamp set, which is very cool. And then they also give you ephemera, chipboard stickers, your Project Life cards, pack of them, some puffy stickers, some alphas, and then some six by eight papers. So these are a little smaller in size, but again, they work perfect for um, you know, matting your photos or adding to your 12 by 12. So for this, this is more Project Life, so it's a smaller scale. I also do um, like a six by eight mom journal, so I use these as well. Um, but again, Citrus Twist is another company. They do offer 12 by 12. So if you go on their website, you know, you might like their um, 12 by 12 scrapbooking kit too. But I just love getting the variety of product and it's interchangeable. I can use this for Project Life or I can use this for, you know, traditional 12 by 12 or 8.5 by 11 scrapbook pages. It's just new product to have fun and play with and it's different stuff that I wouldn't, I wouldn't find this in a store. So that's another big reason why I like the kits. Uh, it's just something new, fun and different and it, it comes in the mail every night uh, or every month, excuse me, every night. Oh my gosh, my collection would be out of control. Um, you know, every month it's like a new present and it's just really exciting. And the products are beautiful. So again, um, you know, I know I've done a lot of talking, but kit subscription, really great way to start building your product and get used to, you know, all that is out there, I think without being overwhelmed. Um, couple other things 
is in addition to um, pattern paper and embellishments, you are going to want cardstock. Um, I often have white cardstock and black cardstock on hand. That's what I have most of and what I use most often. There are, um, you can get cardstock in lots of different colors. Um, it all depends, again, on your style. I don't use as much of the color cardstock as I do white and black. Again, there's lots of different manufacturers of cardstock. Uh, Basil is one really great brand that I personally like. Um, this is another one close to my heart. Um, I really love their their cardstock as well. I buy their white and black. Um, there's also mixed media specific um, cardstock, which I use the Vicki Booten uh, foundations paper. So you're definitely going to want cardstock because this is going to be your base for your layouts um, more, more often than not. So if you're going to do traditional scrapbooking, you're going to want lots and lots of cardstock. So I tend to buy this in bulk because you're going to use it all the time. Um, and I would, would just start with white, maybe some black, and then go from there. Again, with the kit subscriptions, you do have the option to purchase the cardstock add-on kit, which comes with a lot of, you know, 12 different color, or I think it's six different colors, but 12 sheets of cardstock. So that's also an option too, if you want to continue with colors and have it coordinating. Um, so really it's up to you, but cardstock is a must have, a must, must have. And then last but not least, <laughs> Um, the final tool or item that I think you should have when scrapbooking is a good pen for your journaling. Um, if that's something you plan on doing in your scrapbooking. I don't journal on every layout, but I do journal on quite a few. Um, so you're going to want a good pen um, that writes well. So this is, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, ah, can't get it on there. This is a Sharpie fine point. Um, pen and I absolutely love it um, but there's lots of different options out there for pens so you want something that doesn't smudge and um, uh, it just writes well and that you're comfortable with because it's important not only to tell the story through the creative process but I also think there are times on a layout where it's really important to to write down the actual story because the photos can tell a lot but there's just something about writing down that story which just ties everything together um, and especially those fun memories that you want to make sure that you you don't forget. So writing down all the details is, is really, really important. So a good pen for journaling. And that is going to conclude my recommendations for your must-have basic supplies for scrapbooking. Whether you're new or you kind of, you know, don't have everything, you want to learn a little bit more. Uh, this is again is just my personal opinion and my experience based on uh, my years of scrapbooking. So I will link um, products below of everything that I can find a link to so you have easy access to this, um, these supplies. I hope you have found this video very helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so uh, until next time, I hope you have fun scrapbooking and I will see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.